Change requests in Autodesk PLM 360 provide the necessary details, decision points, and workflow to control change to a product or process. Commonly known as ECRs, or Engineering Change Requests, these are one of several potential steps in change management. They can be the result of a corrective and preventative action, a problem report, or created at any time by those with permission to do so. Though provided in an out-of-the-cloud configuration, as we'll see here, these change requests can be tailored to your exact company processes. The Change Request Workspace is grouped together under the Change Management category, and it's the third one down here, uh, Change Request. The particular record that we have open here was one that was automatically created or spawned directly from a problem report. In fact, if we scroll on down here, I can see the related problem report is right here with a link. So if I wanted to go back to that, I could uh, jump, just jump right back to that record inside of PLM 360. This is nice for auditing purposes. If this was something that was created as a result of a corrective and preventative action, there would be a link right here. Next, let's take a look at this record in a little bit more detail. First, we see that the title was actually something that was carried forward directly from the problem report record that uh, spawned it. There's a routing type and this routing type can either be normal or optionally fast track. And we'll talk about this in a minute when we get into the approval workflow. There's a priority drop down. And again, this is something that is highly uh, customized. It comes with high, medium, low out of the box. The details, we can go and say that this is a uh, uh, particular uh, change reason code. Enter a purpose down here. And then under the team area, the team section is where we can see the predefined approvers based off of the routing type and I can also add in any ad hoc approvers for stage one and stage two approval. Also further down inside of the details tab we have an option down here so on closeout do I want to generate a change order on approval. Putting a check in this box means if I get through this change request and everything goes right and it is approved it will automatically generate or spawn a change order much in the same way that the problem report generated the ECR. Taking a look at some of the other tabs that are provided to us within the change request workspace, the next one over we see we have an option analysis. Clicking on add gives us uh, an area where we can go in and enter in different options for resolving this particular change request. So we have a description, a couple of cost fields, a risk assessment field and then the option down here to choose which one of these is preferred and you can have as many of these as you want. This is nice for a running record of different people's opinions, different approvers and different stakeholders to weigh in, put in the uh, the different descriptions and the costs and ultimately use these as decision points through this change request. And Within the change request workspace we have a tab for the affected data. So on the overheating issue if we want we can actually go out and identify and call out the exact uh, affected component that we're going to need to resolve an issue with. And I'll save that down. Now this will become important later on when we go in and we do an audit or we go in and, and interrogate uh, this particular component and see how many change requests or change orders or problem reports that were called against it. So before we get into approvals and workflow Let's talk about the Attachments tab. Most workspaces inside of PLM 360 have an Attachments tab. This is useful for uh, uploading an attachment and it might be your, your reason or your argument, it might be analysis results in the case of this overheating to show the proof behind why the change request has been called. Now onto the uh, Approval Workflow tab within the Change Request workspace. This represents a graphical uh, illustration of the workflow steps and stages that this change request must go through to come to completion. There are a couple things to note uh, with respect to the change request workflow. Right now we are in the create state and we can see that there are two ways out of the create state. One is to cancel it altogether and then the other one is to submit this for engineering evaluation. All people that are part of the approval team will receive an email at this point and they'll be required to log in approve the ECR in order for it to move forward down the stages. Other things that we see in here, when you look at a workflow and you see a lock state, lock state means it's when it gets under here, this is the change control board review, it will effectively lock down the record. So 
people cannot go in and make changes while others are uh, logging in, weighing in, and making a decision as to whether to proceed or not with this change request. Now, the way that this particular change request workspace is wired up is notice that we don't have an option to go to the single track or the fast track. That's because an answer back here on the details tab under the routing type went with normal. Normal will send it through and allow for multiple reviewers. So to illustrate how this is wired up and how we can change it, if I go back and click on edit under the details tab, I'm going to click on fast track and save this down. And in doing so, notice that it removed myself as a stage two approver. More importantly, back on the approval workflow tab, the workflow routing has taken a different path. Now I have the ability to submit this via single track, also known as a fast track. So changes made in the details tab oftentimes have a direct effect on the workflow routing and the path that you can take. And now it's time to follow through with this change request. So I'm going to advance the workflow by clicking directly on the map. And one more step, I'm going to finally approve this. So now with this change request closed out, let's go and take a look at a few things that happened automatically. First, back to the Details tab. Recall down at the bottom in the closeout area of the ECR, we put a check to generate a change order on approval. Well, look at that. It went and created a change order. In fact, I have a link directly right here to it. But before we go there, let's take a look at the problem report that this was spawned from or created from. Back here inside of the problem report, which was the beginning of that engineering change request, we see that the workflow state is now closed. The act of changing that change request retroactively came back and closed out and advanced the workflow on this problem report to a closed state. Finally, back to the change request workspace. Let's come back down here, take a look at the change order that was created by closing out this change request. And this will be part of the next tutorial.